Good evening. We interrupt your program briefly to let you know the winner of the last contest. Now, each week and every week, you can enter to win a copy of a cool game donated by one of the awesome people appearing on the show. So be sure to check it out. Look below the game for instructions on how you can enter. Hint, it's real easy. All you have to do is comment down below. All right, without further ado, this week's winner is Tim Vernig. Tim is one of our staunchest supporters from way back when we first started, and it pleases me greatly that his name finally came up today. So thank you, Tim. You get to win a copy of Evolutions Digital, along with a awesome swanky neoprene map for Wits and Wagers Las Vegas. So that's all. Tune in this week where you can win another copy of Evolution Digital by simply following the directions. game time last week hopefully you got to see the interview with mr marty Connell. this week we're going to play a game and we dressed exactly the same for continuity reasons right i watched this i, I watched it after the last week's show and everything hey get back and play that music again i like those eight beat beats man <laughs> hey, eight bit beats that's a cool intro there that's what i like to Makes hear pull up my Makes me want to pull out my Game Boy and play a game. Right? All right. Well, in that case, let me magically transport myself to the set. Wow. Very impressive. <laughs> it yes. doesn't take much to uh, excite me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what game are we playing? We're playing some exciting. War Chest right here, I Ooh. believe. Um, that won a is, Squirrely Award for us last year. Yeah, this is inspired by uh, by the Roll Dice Take Names enthusiasm uh, for it. Um, I had a, a similar game in mind for this evening, the, uh, the old Cosmos two-player classic, The Rose King. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Tony uh, Biocoast loves that game. We'll save that one for uh, <laughs> throw when he's on. <laughs> All right. So um, I will run down this one real quick for the audience. For anyone who's not familiar with the game, it is a two player uh, uh, abstract sort of combat game, um, but it's based on a bag building mechanic. So each of the players has one of these charming uh, uh, bags with um, their army in there right now. Two tokens for each of their four units. Um, Marty's units are the Berserker, the Swordsman, the Royal Guard, and the Pikeman. Chris's bag has the Mercenary, the Scout, cheats up and looks at the Marshal, and the Light Cavalry. Uh, <laughs> always professional. Um, so what we're gonna do is on your turn, you're gonna draw three of your units out of your bag, which are these, these lovely heavyweight poker chips. Uh, you're going to be able to play each of those chips to produce an action. It could be deploying a unit to the board, it could be moving or attacking with an existing unit, all in pursuit of the goal of getting six of your control tokens out on the board. You start with two on your initial two spots. Um, you get a unit onto one of these control points, you play that unit's token in order to capture that point, and you'll get to place one of your control markers or steal one from your opponent. Get six out, you've won the game, and um, I think that's good enough to get us started. I think we're, we're going to flip this guy for initiative right here. Marty, you'll be playing as our, uh, our, our Black Ravens here, and Chris, you'll be playing as our Golden Wolves. And, uh, and let's see who's going to start us off in the first round. All right. It's not fixed, but it is Chris. I need every advantage I can get when so, I play. We'll give the initiative marker for now to the wolves. Uh, and that's actually not visible on the board as I have it. Let's move this up here. And now it is. Um, and why don't you go ahead, both players, please draw three, uh, three of your chips from your bag. And Chris, you're going to get to take three actions. 
So, let's see, this is made by, what, AEG? Yeah, okay. Aldrac, um, designed by uh, Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson. There you go. Yep. David Thompson uh, actually came on our uh, Squirrely episode where we gave away the awards and accepted the award for this game. Very nice. I, yep. I do have to say in a side note, I love the Squirrelies. Like a lot of people. Thank you do, so much. A lot of people do the award shows, but that's kind of my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we try to be a little bit different and we couldn't do it without. Gosh, we had 20 something guests on this year on the show, which just made it amazing and a nightmare to edit. But it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as somebody who just got done their anniversary special. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Chris, you can play uh, one of those tokens to the board by deploying it on one of your control locations. You can play it face down to do a recruit action. Um, you can play it face up to use one of your units on the board, but since you have none, it seems unlikely that that would be your first move. Right, right. Um, so I think we'll go face down with the right control point. Well, that would be a face up move if you want to deploy the unit there. Face down would be to recruit a, a chip into your bag. Oh, I intend to recruit. Oh, okay. So, so this is if, if you're playing face down, that'll just go in your discard pile. And then, uh, which unit are you recruiting? Another one of your mercenaries, another one of your scouts, marshals, or light cavalry? Uh, I think I'm going to take the. It looks like a loot, but I I think it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. I <laughs> I believe a uh, the cell sword sword is piercing his money bag. Uh, go ahead and, and add that to your discard pile as well. No, nope, it doesn't get to go straight in your bag, unfortunately. Stop <coughs> cheating, Chris. <coughs> you'll, you'll, you'll shuffle that into your deck the next time. You do not get to draw back up. Um, when so, do I get to draw back up? Uh, at the beginning of the next round. But you do get two more actions this round. You get to use two more of your coins. All right. Um, so the exciting part about this game, well, I'll wait till you have some movements to use tactics to discuss that. Um, sure. So let's deploy. All right. On the right side. Okay, so here we go. The uh, the marshal comes in on the right side, and you have one more action to play this round. You can deploy to the other point. You can bolster the marshal. Um, let's deploy the other point. Okay. And there's another marshal. I uh, don't. No, you cannot have. You only have one unit of a given type uh, on the board at one time. See, I'm just testing you. So uh, it's, it's it's all for this is you know this is a stage, a scripted moment for the the audience's edification, <laughs> so that we can help slow roll the rules out via these uh, the exactly. scripted playthrough. So Chris Smart. Chris knew that the, he couldn't deploy a second unit, but uh, but he pretended. So this could either be played to bolster your existing martial unit to make him harder to kill, or could be played as an action um, face up or face down. So this will actually be a recruit, and I'm gonna recruit a cavalry. Okay. Okay, got that to your discard pile. And that is hit Chris's three tokens all played, so Marty, we're over to you. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, t I drew a pikeman. And I would like to deploy the pikeman on the left side of the board. Okay. And just that so we're dealing with the mirror, and Chris is actually right here in the room beyond me. Is this what you intended, or is that it, your right? It is, but okay. I'll call it whatever you want. It, left is good. Left is left is a good okay. term. I, uh, the camera will switch that on me, so I'm making sure. Um, okay, right. so that was action number one. Deploy a pikeman. Uh, action number two, take a royal guard and put it on the right control point. Sure thing. And the last one, I'm going to do a face down action to recruit a berserker into my discard pile. Okay. I'm done. He's adding to the berserker supply in this round in a future, in his bag in a future round. All right, everyone, into round two. Chris remains holding the initiative. Everyone draw three chips, and Chris will be first to play. And I'm right in <coughs> saying we do not add these other chips back in until our bag is up. As one would expect in your usual pool deck bag builder. The, yes, once you go to draw and you cannot, that's when you shuffle them in. Um, so the exciting part about this game is, in addition to the obvious, every unit can move a space, attack anyone adjacent to it. But the 
uh, each unit's tactic is specific to that unit. That's their special power that you could also use when activating that unit. The Marshal, for instance, his special power is that he can help out. He can command a unit nearby to attack. Any unit within two spaces of him, he can command that unit to attack, if able. All right, so I'm going to deploy him on the other spot. There's your mercenary. I'm going to deploy my scout, one forward of the... So you can only deploy onto control points. But the um, scout may be deployed. Oh, adjacent, adjacent to... to see? Enemy. See, look at this. Someone is reading the cards. So here we go. So which adjacent to your... The, right yep. there. Okay. Scout is out. So, so Dan, I just drew... I just drew my yep. my wolf token. What are these good for? So those can be used to activate the royal guard um, uh, that you do not have, but uh, when Marty draws his, he can use it to activate the royal guard. But under normal circumstances, are used just for face down actions. So this would be an opportunity to either, well, you have the initiative, so you won't be taking that, to, uh, to recruit one of your uh, additional chips. Now, I do recall that recruiting can kind of be difficult because you want to leave some open late in the game and you don't want to chunk up your bag. So, I will just take one scout. Okay. I remember that burning me last time. There's a, there, are, there are layers to the, the, to the like strategies an, here. Like a parfait. Got peeled. All right. What have you got there, Marty? Um, let's... I got a Royal Guard. Let's bolster the Royal Guard that's on the board. Done. We are two stacked. Right, row. It's going to be hard okay. to kill. Next, let's take the Pikeman and let's move him. Uh, let's move him to the four o'clock position from his relative position. Thank you. And finally, I'm going to do a. Face down to recruit another into my discard pile. Another pikeman? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to tell you what that is. A sword. Yes. Sword. Yes. The, 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 the unit recruited is revealed to the opponent in case Chris is keeping yeah. careful track. He's got his notepad yes. out over here. He's, he's scribble, scribble. <laughs> Swordsman is, has been recruited. We and got is it. now my discard pile. <coughs> it's okay. not an invisible swordsman, is it? <laughs> okay, if, if y'all haven't seen that movie, if you don't know what the reference is, go watch Three Amigos. Like, stop this video. Go watch and come back and see how the game ends. Yes. Right. yes. Chris has a plethora of coins in his discard pile Thank right you. now. So. How can you tell it's the how can You, tell it's you the use that bag? word, but I do not uh, think it means you, what you think it means. How can you tell it's a mail plane? <laughs> how can you? Oh, I'm not going to say it. It's <laughs> a family, family friendly show here. Well, not mine. <laughs> yeah, someone gave you the wrong impression. I don't know which episode you watched there, Marty. By its little testicles. Okay. <laughs> there we go. You know, I, I insist everybody call me El Wapo. Um. <laughs> My little buttercup. <laughs> That's the sweet. A, a, a smile, a smile. <laughs> this Ned Niederlander. Um, <laughs> we can go on. We didn't even get yeah, into the whole money. Quote the whole That's for the best. We uh, <laughs> <laughs> would have been, <laughs> been a very Look late recording. <laughs> to discard right. my marshal. There you are. Mercenary. Yep, okay. And he's going to move one north. Then we will. Now, the mercenary's uh, tactic, I will point out, is quite interesting, which is that when you recruit a mercenary token, you actually can move your mercenary unit on the board. Right. Which didn't tell me the last time I recruited. Because you, you didn't yet have one. Exactly. So I will deploy a horsey. A horsey, indeed. And I believe I am going to... So there's five of each, correct? Yes. So that means there's Some of one have in my pile. Different numbers, yeah. Yeah. That's true. The, there are only, for instance, four total of uh, the pikemen. Okay. So mm -hmm. mine are all five. Yes. That's and, except for the pikemen. Okay. That's accurate. So I believe I will bolster my calf. There. It is bolstered. So that was three actions, I believe. So uh, over to you, Marty. 
All right. Could you uh, take a swordsman and uh, deploy it onto that control point that's open? I have another swordsman I would like to use to move that deployed so, um, swordsman to the 7 o'clock position. And l- lastly, I would like to deploy a berserker onto that control point. Yes. And my bag is empty, so I'm going to fill my coins back into the bag. Ditto. All right. Go to the next round, everyone draw up. From a fresh bag, anything could happen now. Or the same thing could happen twice. Um, I will move the scout forward right one. Yep. So that gives me that control point. Well, you'll have to actually spend an action, activate that scout in order to place your control marker on the point. But it certainly gives you ownership of it for now. There we go. Okay, now the control marker comes out and you're halfway to winning the game. And as you said, it has to be the scout that activates it. Correct. Yes, yes. In order to capture the point it, it, that that unit is standing on. Exactly. All right. So I am going to recruit a mercenary. Okay. So add that to your discard pile, and you get to move the mercenary um, that you've to already the, placed. Let's move it up to the two o'clock position. Oh, and I actually stand corrected. It says you may maneuver, and maneuver applies to any of the normal face-up actions. In this case, I think move is what you want, but it also could attack, use its tactic. Mm. Well, it has no tactic, but you could, it could also attack or control after recruiting to it. So, I'm sorry, you said up. Yep. Two o'clock. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Okay, over to Marty. Okay, uh, I would like to take a Berserker and bolster the one that's on the board. Bolster some big fat stacks. So let's play a Swordsman to my discard pile to move it down to that control point. And a second Swordsman to claim it. And control markers are right there. All right, so invisible. (laughs) I can can see him. Plain as day. Plain as day. He's, He's not hiding in a singing bush or anything. So, <laughs> am he I killed the singing to... swordsman. <laughs> so, am I supposed to ask you about your favorite donut? Oh, uh, all right. So, who? I uh, hard on. <laughs> who was it? Was giving me junk about this? Oh, it was Jeremy from Blue Peg Pink Peg. Was it him that asked? It might have been. <laughs> all right. So, Jeremy has this thing where like Dunkin' Donuts is the best donut ever. That is incorrect. It is um, the Krispy Kreme donut who originated in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's like you're eating sweet air that happens to contain 200 calories, but it's like sweet air. You put it in your mouth and it just dissolves. Amazing donut. Amazing. So w- one of the most disappointing moments in my life, I was stationed in Pittsburgh training for a restaurant. And I saw a Krispy Kreme store sitting nearby the restaurant. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I know what I'm having for breakfast for the next three months. And uh, (laughs) went there on day one and it was shut. Oh, yeah, not good. I I am a huge fan of a Krispy Kreme. Dunkin' Donuts is not bad, but Krispy Kreme is not bad. Dunkin' Donuts breaks my heart because they no longer in our youth. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts was still like ba- uh, uh, frying the donuts on site, and that's no longer the case. Those things no. are those things come in on I, trucks these days. Yep, they have. I think that's the reason why is because most Krispy Kremes still have the fryer and everything in the store. That's the famous hot donuts now sign. Every that when you minutes. go in there, yeah, they, you pull it. They pull them right off the conveyor belt and give it to you hot. Oh, <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> Amazing. Hey, at least you can satisfy that hunger. <laughs> I it's can't. True. So I will spend a cavalry to move to the other control point. Because a cavalry can move two spaces. So you activate its tactic. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Uh, clip, 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 clip. I, I can't do a uh, horsey noise. You don't have two empty abs of coconuts? Yeah, there you go. There you go. We need to watch movies together. I think that could be its own show. It could be. All right. 
I will activate the mercenary and take that control point. This is looking uh, this is looking problematic if uh, if I'm sitting in Marty's uh, spot because uh, many control points. So he has what Seems four now? Yes, the two starting control points, these two right here, and a light cavalry, a bolstered light cavalry sitting on a fifth. Got it. All right, <clears throat> and then. I am going to recruit a scout. Yeah, what no, I think I think there's a whole show just sitting there watching bad movies. Well, good movies. And just yeah, I was going to say, whoa, calm down, bad yeah, movie. Yeah. All right, I have the I like um, royal coin that I'm going to use to discard to move the royal guard to the four o'clock position. Perfect. So. I, I have a berserker that I'd like to move down to the six o'clock position. Um, now, and for what it's I, worth, uh, okay, it, you you are allowed to discard like some of the bolster to move it again, but yes, know. yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to though. And then I'm also going to take the pikeman that's there, and I'm going to move him to the four o'clock position. There you go. All right. Draw back up. Initiative stays with the wolves. Are you hungry like a wolf? This makes great audio. <laughs> I think that the, the audience is able to appreciate the. the it gives so them reminiscence I, of their own tactile. I, I tell you, joys. Uh, it, games that use poker chips. I tell you right now, I'm instantly a fan. The. Uh, the uh, Kickstarter version of Brass, uh, Lancashire and Birmingham. Oh, my goodness. Th those money coins. They're uh, heavy. Love it. Uh, and, oh, uh, uh, um, uh, t uh, Too Many Bones. Okay. And, and Undertow. They use uh, poker chips, too, which are amazing. So, Love the poker chip bones. component. God, I, I highly recommend trying it. Fun game. Fun co-op game. Nice. All right. Um, games Chris doesn't like with poker chips, Splendor. Poker? Oh. Um, no, but I actually like poker. I just am horrible at it. Let me bolster. You're my, my favorite birds. kind of poker player. Is that? <laughs> yes, yes. I. Everybody sees me coming. Believe it. Okay, so we are bolstering the existing scout. We are going to take over the cavalry. The fifth grail. control point. The grail shaped beacon. Over here. I was One very ago. disappointed, Marty. I saw the um, production of Spam a lot. And yes. uh, the castle anthrax did not figure into the play at all. Was... So they totally removed that scene? I think so. Or was it because it was of the content? out of the show that night. So I don't know which. Yeah. And well, that's probably the raciest of the com uh, oh, uh, yeah. content, so I didn't know whether it was because of that reason. <laughs> Let's bolster the musician. <laughs> the loop player, indeed. Okay. Yes. Marty, what you got? All right, so let's take that royal guard. I'm going to discard that and move it down to the control spot. Let's move the uh, pikeman down to the control spot. And let's bolster the swordsman that's on that other control spot. Done. That's it. Uh, a fight is looming. Indeed. All right, draw your next uh, round chips. And yep. Chris, what do you have for me? Let's see. We will spend a, which guy is that? My marshal, and we will activate the birds. So that uh, will allow, the, the marshal will allow that unit to attack, but he has no one to attack. The scout has uh, no targets. Oh, it only at the attacks. Moment. Yeah, it's tables. not. It's not a maneuver. Not unlike the mercenaries' tactic, which is a maneuver after recruiting, the marshal's tactic 
Understood. Is an attack. All right. So he is going to go north one. The marshal will go. Yes. One. So um, the once the units are bolstered, you cannot move them independently. Correct. Yeah, it moves as a stack. That's what I thought. All right. So we will move the mercenary to two o'clock. Coming after those pikemen. And then, well, with a pikeman, I believe I'm in within range at two, correct? And then for my last action, I will take a... Add a marshal to this crap Okay. M Marty. All right. Uh, I'm going to uh, take a the berserker, bolstered berserkers, discard a one and move it down to the four o'clock spot. I'm then going to use the berserker action to discard one of those off the top to attack the mercenary. Oh, and this leaves the game. Do not make that mistake. This mercenary is yep. slaughtered. He does not return to the discard pile. Ooh, long live the mercenary. Then no I'm going to take a the, face. These barbarians did not care for his loot playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I'm going to take a face down action to recruit another berserker. Got it. And uh, I'm going to bolster the swordsman. Oh, I don't like that. Pot. Stack. Stack is getting mighty. Mighty, mighty stack. All right, so so I wanted to correct any impression that the, the pikeman does not have greater range, though mm -hmm. there there would be many video games in which that would be the, the case. In this case, the problem is that if you attack the pikeman, he gets a sort of a counterattack, and you remove a coin from the attacking stack. Uh, right, that is the pikeman's ta ability. Just so you are aware, that is good to know. <clears throat> so we will let's move the scout. Um, to 10 o'clock. And then the scout will attack the pikeman. Okay. <coughs> the pikeman is removed. Mm hmm. Uh, and so is one of the two scouts from that stack. All right. And then the mercenary is going to attack the berserker. Okay. And the berserker is removed. All right, so uh, not going to do that. So you said you heard that they're going to do an expansion for this? Yes. Yay. Yep. I'm going to do a face down action to recruit a s swordsman. Got it. I'm going to use a swordsman to claim. No, I already have that one, don't I? Uh, I'm going to use a swordsman to move down to that mercenary. And... I'm going to claim the spot that's under the Royal Guard. There's one under there, right? Yep. Yes, he's on a control point. Yet unclaimed, okay. but now it is. All right. All right. That's it. All right. These are, these are dangerous times. So uh, Chris right. has is sitting at five control points. Chris, draw your three and tell me what you got. I have a mercenary who's going to move to two o'clock. I have another mercenary who's going to claim it. I believe that will end our game, right? There is no, uh, there is no yep. wait to the end of the round or other similar yeah. facts, right? That is, that I is it for I did not us. play that very well <laughs> at all. Good game, Chris, good game. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it that. <laughs> Fantastic game. It's 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 one it's of those that's like 
playing. Yeah, it's one of those. It's like I wish I could see it more. Yeah, that's no excuse. Fantastic game. Fantastic game, man. You're certainly at a disadvantage. No one can deny that. Uh... Nah, nah. I can I can see everything just fine. I was just I was just playing stupid. That's all. Welcome to my world. That's usually my role. <laughs> Well, yeah, this, I'm taking away the squirrely award for this game. That's it. It's over. <laughs> taking the award back. Well, you know, I mean, I, I enjoy it, and I'm I don't kidding. like a lot of abstracts, to be honest. So I, I, I do too. Did you ever play the Duke from Catalyst Game Labs? Yeah, so it reminds me of the Duke, but I actually like this better because I can control what's in this bag. I can stack it with as much or as little as I want. With the Duke, yeah. it's kind of like everything's in there, and you pull out. And also with the Duke, you got to click on pull out and use it. I love the fact that you get three things here yep. that it gives you just m more options with. So um, I, I like this game uh, better than the Duke. It's, it's just a sweet two-player abstract game. The other thing I like is that I don't have to constantly flip my pieces to see what they do. Because like yes. in the Duke, I used to have to do that all the time. Yep, it's like, what's this one do? What's this? Yeah, because for those who've never played the, played the Duke, when you move a piece with the Duke, it flips to the other side, and each side has different abilities. Yep. So you're constantly looking, what does the other side do? Because when you move it, it will flip over. And you're constantly doing that, if you, unless you just know the pieces really well. Which uh, yeah, takes, I, I like this game. Yeah, it takes too long. And then the other thing is, if you flip one, you kind of have to flip them all so you don't give away your move. So... Definitely has some drawbacks, but I think you're right. Maybe that's what I like about this. And the different units that are in it are, have that variability, but I like yep. the bag building. Yep. Yep. Absolutely great. So thanks for playing along, Marty. Where can people find you? They can find us. Well, we have a podcast, Rolling Dice and Taking Names, which you can find on most of your podcast listening devices uh we are on itunes if you want to subscribe there if you want to go check out our website you can do that at rolldicetakenames.com if you want to follow us on social media you can do that at dice and names on twitter dice and names on instagram roll dice take names on facebook or you can go check out our youtube page where we put our episodes every other week but i'm also doing some of uh what i call marty's musings where i kind of look at the business or the the hobby of board games and instead of doing reviews and everything i'll look at like some of the behind the scenes nuts and bolts uh that goes into uh, the board game hobby and how well it's growing and stuff like that so you can check that out too or if you want to you can join our guild over at bgg at uh, guild number one five eight nine love the chips man Thanks. Good stuff. And thanks for playing along. Be sure to join us next time on Game Time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>